Ladies and gentlemen, for the next episode of Driving with Dave, I've got the pleasure of having a conversation with the one, the only, Katie Thurston. Hello. So you go from The Bachelorette to driving in a 2016 Prius. Yes. Boy, uh, times change quick, don't they? Living the dream. Living the dream. <laughs> yes. How's your day going today? Good, because we're going to a magic show tonight. We're going to a magic show. Yes. And magic is only good if it's done very well. Yeah. Otherwise, bad magic is not good. And we're about to see the best magic in the world, I think. I'm ex- I've never been. You thought You've I'd never been? Yeah, you thought oh I'd Oh my gone. gosh. I'd, I've never been. Are you so. serious? Yeah. This is, so we're going to like the only place in the world that does this. No cameras, no proof will be in there. Very exclusive. It's like Vegas, but better, because really what happens there does stay there. Yes, it's going to be amazing. Um, now, this is a casual conversation. I don't like to put you on the spot. Oh, no. why, why does that make me nervous suddenly? You're like, you <laughs> so, know, so. For Let's... my first question, <laughs> can you name four countries in South America? Why did you do that to me? <laughs> No, I'm kidding, you don't have to do that. No. Um, so, no, can I tell We're you, <laughs> Fridays, Fridays, since since like my childhood, there's one thing I like to do, and that's get Diet Cokes. I do love Diet Cokes. I think, I don't know if it's, that, by the way, you're, I don't know if the camera can see this, oh. you're literally a, um, what's the thing called? Disco ball? You're a disco ball. I know, it was actually kind Shimmering. of distracting, distracting when I was driving. Yeah, that's great. Good lighting here. Yeah. Um, so, and again, don't take any, like this isn't a dig at you. I just <laughs> feel like you're the type of person I can bring to a 7-Eleven. Oh yeah. And like that, and you'll be okay with that? Yeah. Um, that, that, what, that's a compliment. That's I a think compliment. that's a compliment. Yeah, because Tasha, she, she, she wants like, you know, the most expensive Starbucks, oh. you know, order. And I'm sure you've probably got an expensive order yourself, but an extra large 7-Eleven costs a dollar mm. and it'll get you through the night. Use, like my mouth is like watering now. I wasn't craving a diet coke, but you said the word, triggered. It's just, I'm just like simple like that. Yeah. Just some, I mean, something about a Friday payday and a soda and a cold, not a plastic bottle. Just a, just in in the in the thing about the abundance of a large soda, you know, yeah. just knowing that you've got the whole night ahead of you. Um, I keep it simple. Uh, so, how's life? Great. Post bachelorette. Really good. I'm doing comedy. I'm. You don't say. I'm in the dating scene now. You're doing comedy. You're, you're um, in the dating scene. You're yeah. going on dates with rock stars and Ugh. quasi Look. famous people. I, li- it's, I do a mix. I do, I'm on Hinge now. I'm, you're on Hinge? I'm exposed to the, the normal people. Too. So Raya wasn't giving you the. I deleted that. You deleted Raya? Yeah. Early, too. I paid for a full year. I was committed. And I was like, this app is so shallow. Have you ever seen what it looks like? No. It's like the most entry level dating app. It's just like, here's some pictures. Here's a bio that no one fills out. Throw in a song and that's all you pretty much you get. You just want to like recognize who the other person is. That's... Yeah. Right. Mike Posner was on there with his own song as his song choice. I was like, that just <laughs> summarizes the app. You should just have your fantasy suite like photos of you just being like, no, this no. doesn't work out. Yeah. You might've seen me there and I'm still here. Yeah. Um, no, that's, I mean, you know, but can normal people handle you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do they get weird? That is the, the challenge I'm running into. You know, I'm very open to anybody, but the tough part is like my lifestyle is so different than someone who's working nine to five. So it does become like a struggle on like, how do our lives mesh together? And even on Hinge, I didn't, I don't mention anything about the show, but I do say there's a picture of me doing stand up, my first name, which I've now changed. Uh, in San Diego, and you just Google Katie San Diego comedy, boom, they now know I'm a bachelorette. Yeah. So it's like a rough start of being like, are they trying to talk to me because they like me or because they think it's, you know, cool that I was it, I, on TV? To be fair, for a, like a single guy to be like, hey, I just ho- hooked up with a bachelorette is kind oh. of, I hate to say street cred, but that's, I know. you know, when you're just dating random people and then you have that sort of, you know, yep. there's only 20, what are there, 22 of you guys? Uh, in the world, something like that. Twenty three. You want to include, you know, Tasha and Claire season. I think twenty one, including. You guys did the bonus season. Either way, it's a small crowd. I'm gonna do a lap before we go into Seven Eleven here because I'm not quite ready for my. I wanted to split it up a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> I'm taking the turns very slowly. One of these suction cups could fall. 
this is a lot of technology in this car happening right now. I see that. And I think as long as one of the three cameras works, we're going to be good. <laughs> so you did. So you're. You kind of have to lead with the fact that like this was part of your life. And I wanted to ask you this: Do you have any bitterness post bachelor life? Like to who? So bitterness, you know, in is general? is feeling, you know, like you are unfairly treated oh. in a situation. Do you feel like you got a bad rap being a person who wants? people to do well and bring love and joy into the world. So you feel yeah, like- Yeah, there was a period of time for sure I was bitter, mostly to the people closest to me during that time of filming, like producers, the show as a blanket statement. But I've, I've really actually come to peace and closure. Uh, recently, I actually reached out to my, my main producer and we've even like rekindled that friendship. And I don't know, when you, when you heal yourself, you find peace within, you know, like you don't, I don't need them to like like me anymore. I don't need to forgive them. I can just like move on on my own. If that makes sense. It it does. But how do you like how do you cope with knowing their job is not always to protect you? And if you maybe feel like they chose violence over your serenity, you know, when it comes to your season. I mean, that's the tough part. You know, it's like I didn't want Chris Harrison to be the host, and I don't know how people behind the scenes felt about that. And I do feel like I was in some ways treated poorly because of that, you know, because he'd been on the show forever, you know? And it was just like at COVID times and everyone was just like stuck in this bubble filming and working. And I don't know, it just didn't, it didn't feel like the exciting uh, experience that I would have expected. But I don't know that how many people really have an exciting experience. You know, it's, it's a yeah, tough it, thing. It always seems like people just kind of survive it. The survival is really the biggest thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we had Susie on last week and she talked about how you know, and she wasn't even a lead, but she just knows it's it's an unwinnable position because audiences fall in love with specific characters and you're going to be letting some people down or they'll be letting you down. And yeah. So, because I've always said this, anyone in on the on the Bachelor Bachelorette who um, is like, like loved by everyone is probably not that authentic because, you know, Patrice O'Neill always said, if you're not walking half the room, you're doing something wrong. Oh, yeah. So, so did you embrace the fact that you're just not going to please people? Or is it just something that you deal with? Because I know when I get DMs from people that don't agree with anything I say, it's like, bug off, leave me alone. Like, how do you cope yeah. with that? I think there was a period of time where it was like kind of a shock when you see like the amount of people like unfollowing you because of your engagement and or unfollowing you because of your political beliefs. But at the end of the day, that kind of staggers out and then you're surrounded by the people that you want to be surrounded by. If you're not being authentic, then you're just going to lose no matter what when you're trying to please, you know, both sides. So I've just gotten to the point, especially like with comedy, where I'm like, look, if you think I'm cringe, unfollow me. If you don't like the, my sense of humor, unfollow me. Like, I'm not changing what I think is funny to match you, because obviously we're going to disagree. Yeah, it's almost like you're going to lose that that riffraff anyway, so mm -hmm. just kind of get rid of them quick. The old loofah approach. Yes. Scrub them out. Yeah. All right, very nice. Well, you've you've made it through the, uh, the first tough questions that I had here for you. Um, it, because you are more than just someone who was on a dating show. But... It does change your world oh, yeah. uh, in, in different ways. What's the biggest way, like what's the biggest privilege you think you got from being the bachelorette that you now can use in your daily life? I mean, I think financially is the most obvious immediate thing in terms of like how I make money, opportunities that I'm exposed to, directions I can take that continue to build that, you know, wealth uh, is like the most obvious one for me. Where's, what's your socioeconomic background? Middle class, lower middle class, was money tight? Yeah, growing up super poor, like free lunches. Okay, um, free lunch gang. Yeah, and then when I What was, does super poor mean in well, the Pacific Northwest? So for example, my dad, my sister and I lived in what I thought was an apartment, but I, I drove by it since then. And I, I believe it was a, a basement and it was one bedroom, a tiny like hallway type bathroom, like. Like you couldn't have two people stand next to each other at the same time, um, and we we all shared one room. But at the time, I don't like. I'm just like, this is fun. I, I, we're in bunk beds with my sister. My dad's there. Yeah, you know what you know. Yeah, and like we don't need anything else, you know. But then you get older and you drive by that place that looked like this big apartment to you. But then you're like, wait, that's that's definitely a basement that we lived in. So you so you lived in a basement. That's yes. very metaphorical. You started in a basement. Now you're here. Um, made it all the <laughs> way to a Prius. Um, all right, let's continue this conversation in 7-Eleven. Okay. We're gonna get our drink orders. Maybe we'll throw in a splash of Dr. Pepper if we're feeling ballsy. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay.
continue the party. So, I've wanted to ask you about, so you grew up in a basement apartment. When did you realize that that was like, not, you know, the lap of luxury? Um, I mean, at some point you realize three of us in one bedroom is not ideal. But like, even like my sister and I always shared a room. But I think it's pretty normal. So it was your sister and your dad, were your parents together? No, they've been divorced since I was a baby. Okay, yeah. and I wanted to ask you about this because I feel like I have a connection with people that have dad things. <laughs> I don't mean, you know, I don't mean, it is not issues. Daddy just, issues? I call them dad things yeah, because yeah. this is the 10 year anniversary of my biological father passing away. Okay. And it wasn't like weighted like say someone who I grew up with my whole life, but you just, mentioned that you found out your biological dad wasn't your the dad, dad you thought it was yeah how did that come about <sighs> basically it's like um it's a small town that i uh, grew up in and so kind of like everyone must have knew everybody because my biological dad was at a barbecue that my aunt which was my dad's sister the dad who raised me when i say dad that's who raised me okay my dad's sister, my aunt, had this barbecue where my biological dad was at. And my sister was there. And at this point, I think I'm 20 years old. And he approaches her and says, I'm your sister's real dad. At a barbecue? Yeah. My aunt apparently knew this whole time. What? And no one wants to be the bearer of bad news, especially to like her brother. So your aunt knew, but your dad, dad didn't know? Correct. Whoa. I know. Messy. Did you, have you talked to him about that? Did you ever get a chance to talk to him about that? My biological dad? Or your... Or my dad who raised me. Yeah, your dad who raised yes, you. Yes, we found out together officially when the test came. Because we did a DNA test to confirm it. Wow. So we had, we had to find out together. Which was unfortunate because he ended up passing away like a year later. And so part of me is like, I wish he just never had to know that. There's got to be a, there's got to be something good about knowing the truth and still choosing each other, you know? Yeah. I mean, at, at that point, he raised me my whole life. Like, his dad duties were fulfilled, you know? Like, it didn't matter... At yeah. that point anymore, you know? No, I, me and my sister were essentially raised by my stepdad, so we totally yeah. understand that, like, the biology doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But when you still, like, I got to meet my biological father when I was 20. Oh, I didn't really so know. Same he, thing. I didn't even know he existed. So I'm, literally same thing. I didn't know he existed till like, Facebook came out. Oh, my God. And I found out I had sisters and brothers and uh, our nieces and nephews and all this crazy whole family I just never asked about. Yeah. Which, when people say, why didn't you ask, it's like you just... You don't know it. You don't know. Right. Um, so, did you get to have a conversation with your biological father, and did yeah. you have any relation with him? I uh, I tried, but when you're an adult meeting another adult who's trying to pursue you as like a father figure, it's very awkward. You know, like I don't like I don't need a dad. I already had one. You know, like especially with him passing and like the timing, everything. It's just it was just too much. You know. Yeah, my, so. my, when my biological father, when I went to meet him, he, he took us to an Applebee's mm -hmm. and it was in St. Louis and, and this is going to sound so pretentious, even though it, I don't mean it to be, but he was, we wouldn't go to an Applebee's and he's like, you can have anything you want on the menu. <laughs> and I was like, well, this, this makes up for 20 years. Yeah. I can have anything on the menu. But I understood it was like his little effort to connect with me, even though like he wasn't there my, my whole life. Yeah. But your biological father was in the same <gasps> town. Oh, there's Sorry. a dog running across oh. the street. These dogs are bold. Are these just wild dogs? Yeah. Really? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of dogs around here that, that people don't put on the leash. Wait. Yeah. Just no one cares. Just like, He's just going. It's a wild street dog. Street dogs. That's, oh, if that's... I lived here, I would be catching every single one of them, and that would be my full-time job. Yeah, you would just have all the strays. Wow. You'd be that person. Um, Sorry, didn't mean to. No, no. The, this is not uh, normal. This is not normal. Like, no one cares? I care. We cared the first week, and then you see enough dogs running around. Wow. This is how they're supposed to live. They're off leash. They're LA living dogs. Their life. These are LA city dogs. Nice. All right. So your so your dad's situation yes. was you were you were set. You didn't need another. I didn't need that relationship. I had I had a dad. He raised me great, and yeah. Did it affect though, like your other the people that knew? Like, did it affect your trust in them? Oh, I was very angry with my mom for years because she knew. Like, it wasn't like a well, maybe it's your dad. She knew. My biological dad knew they, uh, I think, would have taken it to the grave for the most part. Although I think my biological dad was waiting till I was 18 
just you know for child support purposes or whatever it's just messy it's just uh it's messy but what you realize and i think what 23 and me is teaching people is that shit's messy yeah like nothing was you know people used to be able to keep secrets oh, uh, yeah. generationally family secrets that they no longer can oh, yeah. my my buddy found out his dad wasn't who he thought he was and you look at the photos and it makes perfect sense the guy totally. who is his dad that wasn't um has it how how has it affected your relationship with your uh, i guess technical half sister now there was something that uh, I think kind of brought her some peace, knowing that like biologically we weren't the exact same. Because when we're a year apart, so there's always like competing and who's the smarter one, who's the more athletic one, the more popular. Like you can't like you're always being compared. So who is the smarter one? Well, <laughs> are you the more athletic one? Uh, I I she dropped out of high school, you know. So like we just had very different paths. Gotcha. She kind of had a a, a rough uh, early adulthood that she's now recovered from. But for her, I think it brought her some kind of like closure of like, well, yeah, we're different because we have different dads. Yeah. So I think it, it made her feel better about kind of the stuff that she had gone through. Interesting. Yeah. No, that's very interesting because I've got my younger brothers or my half siblings and, you know, yeah, we're just, we're just slightly different. I always said my mom was just remarrying until she could like perfect the system. Like <laughs> she realized that having an adult stand-up comedian son wasn't the, the final, the final uh, genetic code that she was looking for. <laughs> All right, so cruising right along here. I have a game I call uh, Blur That Boy, and then I go Blur That Boy. Blur. So I'm going to blur out your answer. Okay, I'm going to blur it out. <laughs> you have my word. I'm going to put a little thing over. No one's going to know what you said. So if you want to answer, you can. You can just say pass. It doesn't matter. Okay, um, but my, just a, my answer will be beep. bleeped. Fully no bleeped. No one can read my lips. No one. The lips will be blurred, and you'll be fully bleeped. <sighs> okay. Which contestant male from your season would you have wanted to f and i said that like that because i'm gonna blur out my <laughs> people can just totally figure out what i'm saying which male contestant would you did you regret not taking to the fantasy suite first of all i didn't have a choice who went to the fantasy suite there was like one guy left but were there any guys from like early weeks that you're like damn i I'd, I'd bang but not you know i know i know it wouldn't be anything else I really thought I was gonna sleep with. Okay. <laughs> I did. I I was excited for that one. And then when the show was over, you were you, was that still a possible option when you when you got single? Um. There was a, there was a moment of time where there was like a what if, you know? But I think. But, yeah. Anyone from any other seasons have slid into your DMs? You can just say, like I said, I'm going to blur it out. So you can just. Um, I did get asked out on a date. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And, and your response? Um, I would have to really like him to make that worth it because the chaos that would come from he, one date with that man. He's hot. Oh, he's attractive. That for would for, for sure. sure. <laughs> You would, but that would be a... Bachelor Nation would catch on fire. How did he ask you on a date? Um, like, what was his mood like? It, line? it was, without going into too much detail, because it could tell... I'll blur out your detail. Well, like, at an uh, event, we'll call it. Did he, did he make physical contact? Like, kiss? No, like, hey, how are you? Oh, Touch the we, knee. We, like, yeah, we were all, like, hanging out and, and just really okay. meshing very well. Like, he, I think he's a great guy. But isn't that crazy that you have to consider that it'll be, that you would be one of the more hated people? It would not be worth it, is the thing. Like, like this, he would have to be, like, I want to marry him in order for me to go on a date. Otherwise, I'm like, you are not worth the, uh, the mental struggle of what the public would say about that. Yeah, that would be wild. Mm -hmm. That would be oh. wild. Yeah. Um, how many people in Bachelor Nation do you have blocked on your phone? Ooh, I really do think, um, I do think Nick is the only one actually blocked. And you don't have to blur that one out either. <laughs> I wasn't gonna. <laughs> um, we spoke about bitterness earlier. Do mm -hmm. you have any bitterness that people like me can make money discussing people like you? Be honest. You can you can tell me if it pisses I, I you off. I don't. Want. Like that's the thing. I never understood why people can be bitter about how others are making money. You know, influencers, uh, recappers, YouTubers, creators. It's like, if you are bitter, then do it yourself. And if you can't, then like th there's a reason. You know, like 
use your talent and your talent is like you're really good at technology and people and you're funny and your charisma and keep you're, going <laughs> he's everything guys he's charming and attractive all right shut up that's too much um i still feel come on you can be honest does it not does it not annoy you that you did 12 weeks of mess or 12 days of mess and i was just like <laughs> no i mean the, the only time i actually got annoyed and he knows this is my friend andrew rivers you don't have to leave his name out either oh we love him um i love him love him um he's great i did a, a few shows with him but there was a moment of time where it was just like constant like tagging and material you know, I think his like especially when he's holding a rose in his mouth, and I'm just like, bro. I think I like I literally snapped on him. Um, but that was the only time. Other than that, it's just like it's just part of business, you know. Yeah, it sure is. Um, I speaking of business, when I found out you had checked out my channel, is that another random dog? Um, maybe it's the same one. Oh, just... Should we grab it? No, don't he, grab it. He Look, he's he's, he's he enjoy... literally just just let it live. He's enjoying life. Some of these dogs have little dog like families. They all run around together. Me out. Yeah, well, come back and bring some kibble and bits, and you know they'll love you. I mean, if you're watching this and this is normal for LA, please DM me and give me closure. We are in East Los Angeles. I will think and about it this. It is dog. normal in East Los Angeles. I'll think about this dog for the next year. Well, come back and say hi to them. Uh, <laughs> they're scrappy little guys. Sorry, I keep getting just. I can't see any more like stray dogs. So I felt very prideful when I found mm -hmm. out you kind of had consumed my content yes. but then but then when i found out you liked game of roses yeah. and jess amber i gotta tell you it, it means nothing to me anymore i well, really felt here's the thing though so the way i discovered your channel i don't know if I've, i think i told you this maybe it was we were all locked up to get ready to film women tell all in the hotels no phones and we had access to um, youtube luckily it was a smart tv and so I wanted to kind of like get in the right mindset and kind of remember everything that happened and, and watch things. And so I came across your channel and, and Chatty Broads at the time and was like, oh, this is actually, this is pretty enjoyable. This is, um, you guys, you guys do a good job and Game of Roses is the same way, being just kind of like neutral in a way or like giving everyone the benefit of the doubt. Um, yeah, I used to be more judgy, but, yeah. um. I think you just realize these people are trying their best. Well, and that's that's the thing, you know. So some of these podcasts are really hard to listen to because they're just brutal, you know. And and, and did you have anybody? Because okay, you go on Bachelorette, you know, uh, Blake proposes. I said yes. Yeah. And um and then you do the rounds. Chicks in the office, yeah. love to see it. You do every you do you do the rounds. Mm -hmm. Was there any like? Do you remember those that had criticized you? Because I w I would not be able to not remember. If someone was critical of me yeah. and then they have to interview me, you know, I don't, I, you can't keep up with all the, uh, media at that point. Like I remember even having so many emails coming in that I just never even opened. There's just so much happening. If someone criticized me, there was a pretty good chance. I had no idea. You know, okay. like, like chicks in the office, for example. I, I so like right off the press tour, yeah. there's too much going on and you're, oh, yeah. you're doing the live show and then you're flying across the country yeah. uh, doing, did you do good morning America? I mean, I'm sorry. Did you do, uh, Kelly and the boy, Flair, Ryan and Kelly. Ryan and Kelly. Yeah. That, it was all zoom though. Cause it's still kind of like, Oh, COVID. that's right. Yeah. Of course. Yep. Yep. Do you feel like you got ripped off then that you, that you didn't get the the full press experience, the full red carpet? I mean, yeah, the whole experience isn't like what a traditional season would have looked like, you know, in terms of travel, uh, all the PR that's in person. Even like after my season was over, I hardly got to enjoy like being that bachelorette because then Michelle was the next bachelorette. And then even her, the next thing you know, it's Rachel and Gabby, you know? So it was just like, it was very like a quick moment in time of getting to be the bachelorette. Most people get to enjoy that attention for like a year. I was one of four in like a year, you know? And so that kind of sucks in my opinion. I mean, it, it, it is something and they churn yeah. through you fast. Yeah. How surprised were you to find out you were in the running to be the bachelorette? Just because you were traditionally not a finalist oh, on yeah. that same season. I, I was convinced they were going to offer paradise and I was going to easily say no to it and move on with my life. So why did you say yes to paradise this time around? What? I didn't say yes to paradise. All right. Well, we're just trying. He's <laughs> trying to trick me. Now you've said before that you would never do some, do paradise. Yeah. But have you changed your never to a most likely not? I swear to God, that's another dog. That's the same dog. <laughs> I feel like I have to take this dog. He doesn't want you. You're you see, you have white savior complex. <laughs> <laughs> These dogs don't want you. Look at him. He's hanging out in the grass. He's oh, he's pissing around. Hi. Does he have a collar? Hi. Oh, <gasps> 
What if he is? Uh, no, we've seen that dog around. He's a good dog. Let him be. Grin look at. Yeah. He knows how to cross the street. Why? <laughs> this is. I hate this. I hate this so much. <laughs> this dog. This is, dog is falling. It's a sign. This okay, dog. I'm sorry. I'll, I will. I'll give you this credit. When when my dog got sick, I think it was two summers ago when we kind of first. Uh, met or before we had met you you were the first person to ask how he was doing and I know I've told you that before but yeah. when you when you when you talk about like logging people into the into the, the good book that's like a lifer for Tasha and I Aww. the fact that you're like a good animal person and you know I care about love. simple things like that um sorry I, I, the dog he's distracting me no worries paradise I would not do it maybe they paid me like Maybe like twenty five thousand. I don't think they would. Total or per week? Uh, no total. I mean, it's a really short show. I'm being I'm being a little reasonable. They that's not. I mean, they've paid people. Uh, you know, Becca Kufrin probably got a pretty penny to go on. You think? I mean, I think actually. I think so. Yeah. I do think someone told me the number. If it, if 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 I told you this, if I told you that you could potentially meet the the love of your life on Paradise, would you go back to it? Because Becca did. I mean, they're having a boy. I doing know. That things. is true. She is like a, a pretty big success story, huh? Um, you got a better chance on Paradise. For what? Love? You do. You have you, Versus know, real life? I'll tell you what. No, versus The Bachelorette. Oh, but I do But you've got... On, on Bachelor in Paradise, there are multiple options. People have to, like, double down. It's not all or nothing. So it, it gives you a little bit more of a chance to canoodle with a few others. And you can feel out of, oh, I'm jealous. That means I must yeah. like this person. Here's the thing, though. Look at look at uh, Blake Horseman. He went to a Netflix reality show, and he met the love of his life. So I don't I don't think the Bachelor franchise is for me anymore. Reality TV, I think that is another discussion. Okay, so would do reality TV? Yes. Maybe All Star Shore season two. I heard that there is a Netflix show coming out that's going to be dating um, with like mix of reality TV. What if we did like a dating show that involved picking up stray animals on the streets? I'm in. Would that be? I would that would love that, that. that. I'll be the host, and, we'll yes. do, and there'll be you, and you guys can see uh, yeah. if the guy's uh, willing to uh, scrub one of these dirty dogs down. See, I don't think I could do a date. Like now that I'm, I'm like, I don't think dating reality is for me, but like reality. Date, yeah, dating needs to be a side story oh, to dogs. a different reality show. Is it's there... the same dog. I'm just driving no, in a circle. That, that's that. No, those are just <laughs> like three Lassie dogs. Oh, Lassie dogs. Okay. Yo, we got a lot of dogs here. Well, of them. Oh, you just hit a curb. I thought you were going to say you just hit a dog. <laughs> Either a curb or a dog. We'll find Stop. out. Stop! Um, all right. Uh, home stretch. Woo. Um, have you had any sex dreams about any Bachelor alumni? Surprisingly? Be honest here. No, I, I'm... The fact that you're not a quick no? Well, because I had a sex dream about a girl, and I think she was Bachelor, but I don't remember which girl it was. But no guys. Serene. No, but she's gorgeous. No, I don't remember who it was. You had a sex dream about a a lady from The Bachelor. Yeah, world. it was a long time ago, but I remember being like, interesting choice. Someone you knew or someone you had seen on TV mm. before you were on the show? I feel like I don't know her personally. Okay. Yeah. I can work with that. I feel that. like I would remember quicker if I knew her. I'd be like, oh my God, yeah, I was my friend or whoever. So you thought you were in the running for Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah. I mean, that would be Bachelor. Obvious. Bachelorette is a gigantic... Because, yeah, people are lucky enough to get on Bachelor in Paradise. There's a lot of people that want to get on that show that don't get on. They only have so many people that can be on, yeah. especially with your year where there was extra seasons. Mm -hmm. So what's the conversation when you find out, oh, my gosh, I might actually be the Bachelorette? Like, are you doing the math on that and going, they've never done this before? Um, I kind of thought... Like, I didn't take it seriously because you don't really know until it's, like, official, you know? Up to the, even the moment where I was, like, at a hotel. I was like, I don't know. Anything can change last minute. Um, Did you find out any reason why they took you? And I don't mean any offense to that question. You know, you know I, I don't I don't know. Like, I I thought for sure Brie would have a great chance. I Like, I there's got to be something there. And I'm sure the people closest to her know more than, obviously, I would. But she would have been a great one. Um... And then at what point, how, how soon before you go into filming, do you know, it, like, do you just, is it until you sign that contract? You don't know? I filmed my promo before signing my contract. Yeah. So, like, which I thought was a risky move. Like, if I wanted to, I think I could have just been like, nah, I'm not going to do it. And they just spent all this money on, you know, filming the promo. Well, we know Kayla, signed. Kayla had filmed a promo for Bachelorette and then didn't get it. So, yeah. I wonder if they just do a few people to make sure in case you fall in love that they're 
all their eggs aren't in one basket. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, you made it, and um, you've gone from the prestigious world of The Bachelor to the 2016 Prius, but I appreciate you. Uh, do you have any uh, any words of wisdom you want to share with my audience before we cut you loose? Um, I wish I was more prepared for that, because I feel like I can always give good advice, but not on the spot. What did you learn from the show that's something you would pass down to, like, the next lead? <laughs> Uh, how do I word this? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> no, I mean, I, th I think um, as, as real and genuine that you want it all to be, you do have to lean into the process, as they like to say, which I feel like is the sugar-coated way of saying you don't have as much control as you want to have. And you just got to accept that. And I, I think had I embraced that idea a little more and maybe just focused on, like, one guy... I think it could have been a whole different experience. Oh, so is there any regret then? Um, not regret, because like I do believe everything happens for a reason. But if I could redo it, I feel like I would focus on one guy. And I'll blur it out. But who would that have been? Oh, you don't have to blur it out. I think it would still would have been Blake. Oh, okay. I really do believe that. Like Blake brought a level of comfort to the show that no one else could, and I think his experience in doing it made him feel like easy to be around. You know, all the other guys are like nervous, awkward. I'm trying to nurture and, and take care of them, and you know. And then with Blake, I didn't have to do that. So I just got to like relax a little bit. Interesting. Yeah, but there yeah. was a chance he almost didn't make it on. Wow. Mm -hmm. In which case, who do you think would have taken his place? I don't in, know. In what your I don't know what would have happened because Michael was still definitely a front runner, and he left. You know. Um, How I, did that feel having guys you know, leave? You had Michael leave, and Greg kind of left. Yeah. I, I, I do know... Like, are you in your hotel room going, oh, man, they're going to make me look so stupid? Is a, it like, was embarrassing. Having... To this day, it's still pretty embarrassing. Is it really? I mean, I make jokes about it now in stand-up, but it, like... But is it... Em... Oh. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that like? Is it, are, is it embarrassing, like, you feel... Like, is there an imposter syndrome happening as you're the bachelorette? Mm, I don't think necessarily that, but it is not fun to hear people be like, she was so undesirable, no one wanted her, you know? And I was like, f you. Yeah. Sorry, can you swear on your channel? Yeah, f them. <laughs> f them. Well, um, we're happy that you're uh, out there thriving, and I'm yeah. excited for Magic Castle. Yeah. Cheers to you, and thanks so much Cheers. for doing Driving with Dave. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's roll. Ooh.